Hello everyone and welcome back to Quick Fix Medico. So this is a continuation lecture of principles of tooth preparation. If you have missed the part 1, you can find the link in the description. So make sure to watch that video. Now in that video, we talked about the preservation of tooth structure, retention and resistance and how length, grooves and path of insertion can provide retention. And in this video, we are going to talk about structural durability, occlusal reduction, functional class bevel and axial reduction. So make sure you watch the video part 1 and part 2 till the end so that you have a clear view about the principles of tooth preparation. And now without any further ado, let's begin the video. So let me repeat the components of structural durability that is occlusal reduction, functional cusp bevel and axial reduction. So a restoration must contain a bulk of material that is adequate to withstand the forces of occlusion and this bulk must be confined to the space created by the tooth preparation. So we need a bulk of material because we are doing occlusal reduction, axial reduction and a cusp bevel on one tooth. So we need a bulk of material and only in this way can occlusion will be harmonious and the axial contours normal preventing any perio problem around the restoration. Now talking about the first component that is occlusal reduction. The occlusal reduction or you can say occlusal clearance is the space that is created between two opposing teeth in preparing one or both of them for a cast restoration or in simple words you can say we are just reducing the occlusal surface for the crown to sit in. Now here in this figure can you appreciate how an inadequate occlusal reduction is not providing the needed space for the crown or the cast restoration to sit in. While on the opposite extreme, you can see how well the tooth is prepared, how well the occlusal surface is reduced and how well is the strength and retention of this restoration due to adequate occlusal reduction. Now, if you want to know more about strength and retention, so go watch the part 1 video now. Now, the occlusal reduction values for gold alloy is 1.5 mm, metal ceramic crown is 2 mm and all ceramic crown is 2 mm. Now while reducing the occlusal surface, one thing you need to take care is while reducing you have to follow the basic inclined pattern of the occlusal surface or that is a complete duplicate to provide adequate clearance without over shortening the preparation. Now in this figure you can see the first picture is the exact duplicate of the occlusal surface while the opposite one is incorrect because it is just a flat plane you cannot see the grooves the inclination or anything so that one is incorrect and it would not provide the basic retention not only this the flat plane will lead to a short restoration with no resistance because there are no grooves the restoration will be weak and easily perforated by finishing procedures now let's talk about functional cusp bevel now what is functional cusp bevel it's the additional removal of a teeth or you can say occlusal surface in a preparation that is after occlusal reduction we are reducing a structure a bit more to increase the thickness of the occluso axial restoration what's the use of creating a functional cusp bevel is that it provides additional thickness for the material which is necessary because of maximum weight bearing areas a bevel will help to bear this excess load without fracture now the functional cusp bevel for the upper arch is the palatal or the lingual cusp while for the lower one it's the buccal cusp now in this figure can you see a sharp sudden incline on the buccal side that's what a functional cusp bevel looks like and why on the buccal side because we just said right now that the functional cusp for the lower arch is the buccal cusp so by now you must know how to define a bevel that is any sudden incline between the two surfaces of a prepared teeth or between the cavity wall and cavo surface margin now again looking at the figure to make you appreciate the functional cusp bevel you can see an incline toward the buccal cusp and can you see how well the occlusion is after creating a functional cusp bevel now look at this picture where a functional cusp bevel is not made and there is a lack of it so it will lead to several problems and the cast will be extremely thin in the area overlying the junction between the occlusal and the axial reduction and it will lead to perforation. In this figure you can see we are trying to attempt to improve the restoration which is without a functional cusp bevel. So we wax up the crown to gain optimum thickness and it results in an over contoured restoration and you can see the even the occlusion is not ideal so it will lead to a deflective occlusal contact so by now i hope you know the importance of a functional cusp bevel and what problems you will have to face if you're not making one now let's talk about axial reduction that is reducing the axial surfaces and by axial surfaces we mean facial and lingual surface 
if the restoration is made normal with normal occlusal reduction and a functional cusp bevel but with inappropriate or inadequate axial reduction so they will have thin axial walls that will be subject to distortion while on the opposite extreme you can see a bulbous over contoured restoration due to inadequate axial reduction so it will lead to a weak restoration that's it for today guys i'll come up with the part 3 video in which we will talk about the marginal integrity if you like this video please hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel